Finally, finally, the Federal Reserve has decided to move on interest rates. A little late. They're going to do a whole bunch of it, though, they promise. Like, this is the biggest round of increases we've seen in 15 years. So what does it mean for the markets? What does it mean for your investments? What does it mean for your future? I've got all of that covered today. We're going to talk about it. Quick reminder that portions of this program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There has never been a better time to invest in precious metals than now. Go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. Again, LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. We're going to talk about the Fed. We also got to talk about Putin starting to get a little rattled by all these sanctions. He should be. This will ruin the Russian economy. There will be no economy. Russia is quickly becoming North Korea, and it's all because of one man. The devastation that he has inflicted on the world will be costly, shall we say, for the Russian economy. We're going to talk about that. Plus, it must be like a week for first, right? The Federal Reserve finally, finally coming out and raising rates while President Biden finally, finally comes out and labels Vladimir Putin a war criminal. He has a conversation by phone with China Xi tomorrow. The pressure is on. We need the world united on the side of good. All right, let's start right now with the Federal Reserve. My goodness, finally getting around to raising rates. I mean, I've been pounding the table on this for, whoa, what, a year and a half now? I mean, it was very clear what was happening during covid You had the federal government printing checks. A lot of that money, by the way, never wound up actually going to the actual people. There's estimates as high as $800 million of just sort of lost funds that went out there to people that aren't even alive. The IRS was issuing checks to people that aren't even alive. I know someone who told me his deceased mother got two checks from the federal government. So we had a a lot of mismanagement of funds during that time. And it's catching up with us. You had so much money in the system. And it was like, not just coming from whatever the Fed was doing, but from the federal government as well. So the Trump administration, round one, which I got, round two, not so happy about because I knew it would lead to inflation of COVID stimulus checks. And then Biden comes into office. Once the first thing he does, he prints more money. And you got the third round of COVID stimulus checks. Uno, dos, tres. And that added up, of course, to inflation. People just saved that money. They had all this pent up demand. The Federal Reserve continued printing a lot of money. They were buying up $120 billion a month worth of mortgage backed securities and treasury bonds. And what did that do? It effectively flooded the system with much, much, much more money, kept interest rates very, very low for a prolonged period of time and created a A really false sense to everything. People say, well, you know, why was the market going up so much, even in the face of COVID with an economy that was getting killed? Well, why? You know the expression, don't fight the Fed, right? In this case, it really mattered. How could you fight the Fed? The Fed was printing so much money. Asset prices were going up. We were in a situation where there there was only one direction. The problem with that, of course, and the problem the Fed always faces and our government always faces is. They overreact. And when they overreact, they overdo it. So in this case, we printed way too much money. That led to inflation. And yet these geniuses at the Federal Reserve seem to have no idea that any of this was coming our way. They still thought we were going to get, you know, maybe 2 3% inflation. If you go back to December of this year, it's remarkable. They were anticipating that inflation for the year would come in at 2.7%. Whoa, guys. You know, uh... <laughs> it's time to get with the program. It's time to actually like go to the grocery store. Remember when George Bush didn't know the price of milk? Well, this is one of those situations. It's like Jerome Powell and company. They don't know the price of milk. They don't know what the prices of things actually are. They have no sense of the inflation that's increasingly creeping into our economy. The danger, of course, with inflation is it starts to take off. It runs away. You run the risk of what we're seeing right now, which is low growth and high inflation, i.e. 1970s style stagflation. So these guys got it wrong. In December, they thought, oh, you know, inflation will come in at 2.7%. Now they've changed their minds and they've revised their forecasts to wait for it, wait for it, 4.3%. They think it's going to be 4.3%. I mean, I hate to tell them, but consumer prices, they're already up 7.9% year over year. And by the way, producer prices 
are up 10%, double digits, as I had predicted. You know, I've predicted a lot of this. Uh, I, I tend to get these large macro situations quite right, and a lot of micro ones too. It's the reason why I kept saying, you want to be diversified. You want to have gold in your portfolio. And sure enough, gold reaching all-time highs. It's just under 2,000 an ounce today, but gold is one of those one of those vehicles that really helps iron out inflation. It's funny, my, my parents are visiting right now, and my mother brought down with her something she had in her, her jewelry cabinet, which was an old Miss New Hampshire gold bracelet, like a gold bangle that had etched in Miss New Hampshire 1993, because I was Miss New Hampshire 1993. And they, they gave me one of the sponsors of the scholarship, i going to say scholarship, right? <laughs> scholarship pageant gave me this gold bangle that said Miss New Hampshire 1993. And, you know, I remember, um, well, I, I was a young sort of 19 year old who somehow on a trip to Boston with my parents managed to leave it in in our hotel room and, and lost it, sadly. So we had to replace it. And it cost me $500 to replace this bracelet. I needed to wear it in certain pictures and on certain appearances and stuff. So I went back to the sponsor and replaced it at cost for $500. Well, you know how much that bracelet is probably worth today? At least 2000 At least 2000 I mean, probably, probably much more. I don't know how many ounces of gold it is, but it's, it's a pretty good chunk. And we know that gold prices have just soared. I mean, back then, I think gold was trading around $400 an ounce or so. And now look at where gold is today, again, around 2000 It shows you it's one of those vehicles that can help, help manage inflation in your portfolio. And it's not always perfect. And, you know, you can run different scenarios and different dates. And sometimes the market performs better and sometimes gold performs better. But in a well-diversified portfolio, it's just one of those things that's worth having. And I mention that because it's important for you to know. So if you're interested in investing in gold, and I really think you should be, I want you to call my friends over at Legacy Precious Metals, LegacyPMInvestments.com. I've had Charles on the show before. You can go and watch an interview with him. Charles runs the whole place. It's a family run run operation, just a terrific, terrific group. And they can help guide you through this sometimes very confusing space. Whether you want a gold-backed IRA, whether you want the actual stuff, your own version of the Miss New Hampshire bracelet, I guess, in your home, you can call 1-866-589-0560. Again, 1-866-589-0560. LegacyPMInvestments.com is their website, LegacyPMInvestments.com. I do encourage you to think very hard about how you're going to manage the coming inflation. Because guess what? The Federal Reserve is dreaming when they think it's going to be 4% and change. We're looking at a much higher rate of inflation, and it's going to be very hard to bring this under control. As I explained, once these things start to move, once you start to see price increases, they start to get embedded in, right? And companies are happy. Some companies are happy because they're like, wow, this is the first time like in, you know, decades we could raise the price on, on soup or diapers or any of these other consumer staples. It gives them a little bit more pricing power and they're hopeful that they can manage their costs accordingly so that they can eke a little bit more profitability out of their goods. And so the problem really is that wages typically don't keep up with inflation, right? So so prices keep going up and wages go up a little bit, but they're not going up, certainly not from what we've seen at a rate that's equal to inflation. And consequently, the American consumer gets left out. Not to mention, if you ever want to retire someday, what do you do then? When prices keep going up and you're living off of a fixed income, inflation effectively acts as a tax and it hurts everyday Americans in a really, really big way. So we have to hope the Fed is going to manage this one. Okay. I mean, look, you could have, you know, the equivalent of Einstein maybe there. Maybe, maybe there are a whole bunch of Einsteins and they get this all figured out and it's all going to go swimmingly, smoothly. I don't think so. I don't think so. There are real risks. By the way, mortgage rates just topped 4% for the first time in ages. What this tells you is that the cost of borrowing is going up. It's going to be more expensive to borrow. It probably should. I mean, (laughs) for goodness sakes, to think that you could buy, you know, U.S. treasuries at at a rate of return with 
you know, equal to roughly 1, 1.9%. That's pretty, pretty wild. Do you think I'm going to lend money to anybody? For 1.9%, it doesn't really make much sense, much sense, but it tells you interest rates are going up. So buying a home is going to get more expensive, not to mention the actual real estate is more expensive. The cost of borrowing. So whether you're buying a home, whether you're buying a car, anything is going to go up. This will affect the American consumer. Okay, I want to turn right now to another big story that we're watching today. It seems that these sanctions are getting to Putin. He gave a very fiery speech there in Russia last night. He's very upset about them. You know, he's got his TV host going on state TV saying, well, we think that we deserve California and Alaska as reparations from the United States for all these sanctions, (laughs) to which I tweeted this out. And a lot of you responded. This is great with, well, they can take California. (laughs) We'll give it to them. Anyway, I mean, it's just getting so preposterous and and I shouldn't laugh about this. It's just their their rhetoric, which is insane. But what they're actually doing is tragic. It's heartbreaking. I told you yesterday about the Maripal Theater where thousands of people were taking shelter, families, children. And this animal, this murderer went there and and decimated the place. And we don't have numbers yet on casualties, but what happened is tragic. It's awful. It needs to stop. Our president finally came out, finally came out and said that Putin is a war criminal. You bet he is. And there's no off ramp. There's one thing that's sort of confusing about this. I'm a little bit frustrated. Well, I'm always rather frustrated with this administration, but especially frustrated right now, because on the one hand, we're saying, yes, Vladimir Putin is a war criminal. Yet Anthony Blinken, our secretary of state, came out and said, there's there's an off ramp here. We'll get rid of the sanctions if he just stops all this. I don't know if there is an off ramp here. Okay, I don't think the world can go back to the way it was after we have seen such heinous acts from this individual. Things will need to change. I don't know how we go back to business as normal with Russia. I would still argue. It cannot be business as normal. They need to be sanctioned. Europe needs to join us, by the way, in these sanctions. I don't buy this. You know, we're going to cut our, we're going to cut our imports of natural gas by two thirds by the end of the year. No, no, you got to do it now. And unfortunately, there will be consequences in the way of higher energy prices. And we need to figure that all out. I think if there's one thing that any of this has taught us, it's the importance of energy security. That is a necessary, necessary thing. And we've got to start making sure that we have the infrastructure to do all this on our own. But one thing I will say is that the West has become more united through all of this. I told you yesterday about Intel moving its headquarters to Ohio. It's also setting up shop, spending multi tens of billions of dollars to set up shop over there in Germany. These are good things. We need the West to be more united for the West to be stronger. We meanwhile, as as President Biden sits down in that phone conversation with Xi, He's sending 3,000 more troops to Australia. Why? Because we need to protect our investments there in the semiconductor industry in Taiwan. I mean, I, you know, China must be looking at this and saying, well, do the U.S. It seemingly doesn't really care, right? You know, like you can go and, and do whatever you want to do. That's what Putin's shown us. I do think, however, when push comes to shove, China will need, will need to step up to the plate. And will want to recognize that it can it can gain some of what they call soft power, right? Street cred by coming to the table and helping Putin to realize this is not going to work. But we need the world united against Putin. Meanwhile, that brings me to Iran. I want to know why on earth we are still negotiating with Iran. Apparently, the Biden administration is blaming Trump and saying, well, you know, that they ramped up all their nuclear stuff as a result of the the nuclear deal being suspended, I think we got to get tougher with some of these people rather than acquiesce. The idea that we're going to try and make it all work or that possibly this is one of the ideas being floated. We're going to take off the terrorist label of the Iran Revolutionary Guard. I mean, I don't think so. I don't think that's the direction you want to be going in, guys. Again, I would emphasize doing what you need to do to strengthen your own energy industry and doing everything you possibly can To make sure, yeah, nobody else has nukes. I get that. But what is it that we're doing with Iran right now that would actually encourage them to stop all that? I'm not confident that that's the direction this is going in, especially when Russia is there negotiating on behalf of Iran. There's some really messed up things in the world right now, and it's alarming. It's alarming because you know what? 
what is it, 2022? We got another couple years of this here. It can't change fast enough. This is not going in the right direction. And again, you know, I want to be kind in this environment because it really is the U.S. versus the world. But I just hope some smart heads prevail. Quick reminder, make sure that you go to trishregan.locals.com. You can sign up to, to correspond directly with me on that platform. Trishregan.locals.com will be there live on Friday where I am every Friday afternoon. I look forward to seeing you there. Trishregan.locals.com. Go to my website as well. Trishintel.com. Trishintel.com. Make sure you've subscribed to this podcast. Make sure you have subscribed to my YouTube and Rumble channel. And I'll see you back here tomorrow.